Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be answering the question what is an inverted wing back? as we explain Jao Cancelo's role under Pep Guardiola. But anyway, let's get this party started. This season, Manchester City have been the standout performers in the Premier League, but they're a different side altogether when Jao Cancelo plays. So today we're going to dive into why this is the case and how it is down to his role as an inverted wing back he's been given by Pep Guardiola. So what is an inverted wing back? Defensively, inverted wing backs function much like a standard fullback or wing back by dropping into their back line. However, whilst the traditional fullback or wing back will offer width, to an attack, usually through overlapping runs, the inverted wing back will look to drift inside and create space for players around them. If there's no teammate ahead of him on his side of the pitch, then an inverted wing back will support attacks in more of a traditional manner. But when there is, they will look to affect the play in the center of the pitch. The inverted wing back is a very specialized role in football and it requires exceptional technical ability on the ball, good mental attributes such as composure to stay calm in congested areas, as well as the game intelligence to know when to move centrally and when to stay wide. This also requires a good physical fitness to basically operate in two different positions in and out of possession as well as being able to have the pace to quickly return to a defensive position. Because of the huge demands, inverted wing backs aren't common roles and are usually only found at the very top level or in a very extreme system. In the most common systems that feature inverted fullbacks or wing backs are 4-3-3s and 4-2-3-1s, basically systems that make use of dangerous wingers as inverted wing backs are used to create space for their teammates. By moving inside, they can draw more players to the central areas of the pitch to combat the overload, which in turn creates more space for the wingers in 1v1 situations with the opposition fullbacks. Whilst Marcelo Bielsa can claim a lot of credit for their use in his iconic 3-3-1-3, Pep Guardiola has had the most success with them. At Bayern Munich, we saw the first iteration of Guardiola's 3-8 with inverted fullbacks. Guardiola joined the European champions who had just won the treble playing a 4-2-3-1 with traditional overlapping fullbacks and inverted wingers, but Pep looked to evolve the side. His use of Philip Lahm and David Alaba as inverted fullbacks saw a fundamental change to the way Bayern operated. We all know that Pep Guardiola has an obsession with controlling the ball, and he managed to limit the opposition's counter-attacks by using his fullbacks in these defensive inverted positions, rather than traditional overlapping positions, where they would be unable to recover if the move broke down. What was interesting at Bayern Munich was his use of Tony Cruz as a bit of a halfback. So as the shape transitioned to a 3-2-5, the fullbacks operated as a double pivot, which allowed the front five to comprise of two inverted wingers in Robin and Ribery, two number 10s in Muller and Goetze, playing off Mario Mandzukic. This allowed Guardiola to create 1v1s out wide for his dangerous wingers, a cornerstone of his philosophy, whilst also getting in an extra creative midfielder, but still allowing his fullbacks to defend the wide areas like they were used to. The next use came in Guardiola's 2017-18, Manchester City side. The Centurions began the season in a 3-1-4-2 with traditional wing backs in Carl Walker and Benjamin Mendy, but an injury to the Frenchman forced Guardiola to adapt. The lack of a natural left back forced Guardiola to rethink, ditching a back three in favour of a 4-3-3. This shape would have the width provided by the wingers like his Bayern Munich side. This would leave the half space free for City's creative midfielders. However, this move would leave them light in central areas, so Guardiola had his fullbacks operate in inverted positions, moving onto the same line as the defensive midfielder. This slightly more advanced position of his defensive midfielder than in his Bayern days gave City more options to progress the ball to the front five, a key evolution from Guardiola. This system allowed him to use Walker in a slightly different role and use his pace to help protect against the counter-attack. But on the left, it made the lack of a natural left back a non-issue by the deploying either Zinchenko or Delft there. These were both left-footed central midfielders, and whilst their starting position was new to them, their role in possession wasn't, as they'd effectively become a left-sided central midfielder, or left half. And considering that Manchester City averaged 66 possession in the Premier League that season, their inverted fullbacks played more as midfielders than they did defenders. This was a perfectly executed system. The job of the fullbacks, along with Fernandinho, was to protect, recycle, and progress the play towards the front five, 
allowing those players to do the damage. It was no surprise that City became the first team in Premier League history to finish the season with four players to register at least 10 assists. Those players being the two wingers and free eights, as they performed on the platform created by the central trio. Whilst the Centurions were the most successful use of inverted fullbacks, Guardiola has since evolved the role further this season to use a true inverted wingback with Jao Cancelo. The 2020-21 season has seen Guardiola move towards an in-possession shape of 3-4-3 diamond. The shape is created from a 4-3-3 base. Cancelo operates as an inverted wingback from both the left back slot, where he is on his opposite side to his stronger foot, as well as the right back slot. Regardless of his position, City create their attacking shape by using their wingers to hold the width. One midfielder moves to number 10 to support the striker, whilst the other remains in a number 8 position as Cancelo moves to become the fourth midfielder. This allows City to dominate the centre of the pitch against most systems, and if teams try to match them, uh, it usually leaves their dangerous attackers in a 1v1 situation. And this system has allowed Guardiola to dominate matches. In fact, since their last loss, City have won 24 of their 27 games in all competitions, scoring 63 goals and conceding just eight times. And much of this impressive record is down to the work Jao Cancelo has been doing in the inverted wing-back role, providing both defensive coverage, quality on the ball, and energy in midfield. In his own defensive third, Cancelo helps to create central progression by starting wide then moving alongside the defensive midfielder usually Rodri. Along with their back three and Edison, City are very difficult to press out of the back which has given them such immense control in matches. As City progress into the middle third, Cancelo retains his position in defensive midfield. Like in the defensive third, the five players at the base and behind the ball offer great control, offer good protection against the counter-attack. But it also allows the central midfielders in the shape to operate behind the opposition's midfield, creating a central box and overloading most shapes. Then once they get into the final third, Cancelo comes alive as he steps into a creative position, usually operating from the half space. This is the only area of the pitch that affects how he operates depending on which flank he starts from. From the right hand side, he operates a bit like a Mazzala, but his incredible awareness sees him pick up a number of attacking positions that his teammates have vacated. What's more, he's got the quality to make things happen in each position. For instance, he can play through balls to forwards like he did for KDB against Chelsea combined with teammates with one twos, often the winger on the outside, or making underlapping runs. But this involvement isn't limited to these actions, as he still creates through dribbles by driving both through like you'd expect, but also by going on the outside to create crossing opportunities for himself with both his right and left foot, showcasing his technical quality. He's a really complete player and he even gets into goal scoring opportunities. Take his chance versus Arsenal. Fernandinho in possession, he holds off the pressure, carries and plays it to Cancelo. He goes holding into a challenge and plays it to Jesus, who runs at El Nene before returning it to Cancelo. The fullback then sells Mari and can't get his shot away on target with the outside of his boot. Whilst from the left hand side, I'd describe it as a bit of an inverted winger. He does similar things to the right hand side, but he's even more direct given he can see the player ahead of him on his stronger right foot. He often looks to create through dribbles, either going on the outside and crossing low, or alternatively coming inside and crossing from deep. This season, we've seen Cancelo do both to devastating effect. Against West Ham, he went on the outside. Gundogan in possession, in a deeper role with Cancelo wide. Gundogan plays it to the left back who carries at Souffel and does him for pace on the outside, picking out Foden to finish. Whilst in the Champions League against Gladbach, he operated deeper, but very much cutting inside and crossing as you'd expect an inverted winger to do. After a City attack breaks down, Kramer is in possession. He looks to start a counter-attack with a pass, but Cancelo recovers. He looks to go to the left and simply cuts back inside and whips it to the back post for Bernardo Silva to head home. If you break the final third down into zones and look at who's created the most chances for Manchester City from which zone, it paints an interesting picture of how Cancelo operates. He's in the top three chance creators for Manchester City in the inside left, inside right, wide right and wide left on the byline. And his split is almost identical across each position, which goes to highlight what we've been describing. A little more like a playmaker operating from deep when he plays at right back, whereas at left back, he's a little bit more like an inverted winger. Jao Cancelo is a superb footballer. He's really evolved into a complete playmaker, but from fullback, 
We often suggest that players like Trent Alexander-Arnold, even Marcelo at Real Madrid, are too good to play in defensive positions. And the same can be said of Cancelo. But Pep Guardiola has found a way to get even more out of his playmaking fullback. Take his second assist pass against Gladbach. Rodri in possession for City. He switches it out to Sterling, who controls and goes back to Cancelo. The fullback takes one touch and gets his head up before picking up Bernardo Silva at the back post to nod it across for Jesus to tap in. This is an outrageous delivery from Cancelo. First by picking up a deeper playmaking position you might expect to see from Kevin De Bruyne, but then picking out a pass that even the Belgian would be proud of, all coming from left back. Guardiola's extreme focus on dominating the ball means his players have more to do in possession than out of it, but Cancelo still does his primary job as a fullback. Without the ball, Cancelo is there to restrict counter-attacks. Due to his advanced position in Manchester City's attacking shape, he's always ready to counter-press, and his speed and understanding of the game usually sees him read these situations and immediately stop the counter. However, if City can't regain the ball, they'll drop into their low block, 4-5-1, where Cancelo will operate as a traditional wing-back. Defensively, he's a very good player and has improved considerably since the start of last season. He's making 32% more interceptions per 90 this season, which really showcases an improvement in defensive positioning and awareness. Jao Cancelo is the product of Guardiola's eight-year experimentation of using fullbacks in inverted roles. Their initial job was to overload the defensive midfield area and progress the play to Guardiola's most dangerous attackers and then support the attack whilst also protecting it against the counter. This has now evolved to a point where Cancelo is arguably City's most important player, as he both progresses the play, protects against the counter like Guardiola's original inverted fullbacks, but also creates assists and even finishes off moves. Take his goal against West Brom, O'Shea in possession. He looks to launch a counter-attack, but Rodri intercepts, playing it to Cancelo. He safely recycles it to Gundogan, who plays a 1-2 with Diaz, and returns it to Cancelo. The fullback then carries and plays an excellent ball over the top for Bernardo Silva with the outside of his foot. Silva then picks him out on the edge as Cancelo places it in the top corner with his weaker left foot. This was a disgusting goal from the Portuguese international highlights his role. First being on hand to stop a counter-attack, then receiving and recycling play, allowing City to reset. Then he progresses the ball to one of City's forwards before he gets forward, supporting the attack and getting onto the ball on the edge of the box, where he has the quality and confidence to pick out the top corner. Jao Cancelo's role at Manchester City is so important for Guardiola's current setup. Without an inverted wing-back of his quality, it'd be unlikely this system would work. He's not only the creator in the final third, but he's crucial to their build-up and ball progression. As highlighted by the stats, amongst Manchester City players this season, he ranks first for progressive passes, tackles plus interceptions, second for key passes and successful dribbles, and third for expected assists, total touches, through balls, and ball recoveries. He quite literally does it all for the best team in the country, and for me, on form is without question the best fullback in the world of football. But anyway guys, what do you think? Is Cancelo the best fullback in the world? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?